Welcome or welcome back to Earth's Medicine, where we explore the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. If you're new here and you like to learn about the medicinal uses of plants that are grown in Jamaica and in other parts of the world, then please consider subscribing and turning on your post notifications so that you'll get an alert when we upload our next video. Today, we're going to be talking about clip dagger a plant that has been used in ethnomedicine for a long time to treat many maladies. Join us now as we explore the many medicinal uses of this fascinating plant. These plants are scientifically known as Leonotis nepetifolia. In Jamaica, we commonly refer to them as manpiaba. However, in other parts of the world, they are commonly referred to as clip dagger. They're also commonly referred to as lion's ear, lion's tail, and Christmas candlestick, among other common names in different languages. Clip dagger is a part of the Lamiaceae plant family which is also known as the mint family. So plants like peppermint, oregano, and rosemary are all related to it. The genus is called Leonotis and it consists of 30 species. Clip dagger is widely established across the tropics in regions like Africa, Southeast Asia, the Pacific Islands, Australia, Central and South America, the southern parts of the USA, Mexico, and the Caribbean Islands. In Jamaica, it can be found growing wildly and organically along roadsides, in forests, and in other green spaces. Now, in terms of the description, clip dagger is an erect annual shrub. The stems are sparsely branched and usually have a distinct groove running lengthwise down the center of each side. The plant usually grows to about 2.5 meters high, but occasionally it can grow taller than this. The leaves are smooth to touch and are between 4.5 to 20 centimeters long and 2 to 15 centimeters wide. They are oppositely arranged along the stems and borne on stalks that are between 2 to 10 millimeters long. The lower leaves are oblong to ovate or ovate and they are larger and broader than those towards the top of the plant. All leaves have distinctly toothed margins and are pointed. The plant has big flower balls that encircle the plant's stem and it looks like the stems are growing right through the middle of the flower balls. And as the stems grow taller, new flower balls will appear higher up. These flower balls have spikes and they open up on the tips, allowing orange, furry petals to emerge. However, some varieties of this plant produce red, white, or purple petals. These petals look like lion's ears. Hence the reason why the plant was given the common name, lion's ears. These petals are about one to two inches in length and curve downward. And they are a favorite among bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. The flower balls usually start off green and upon full maturity, they dry out and turn brown in color. By the time they get to this stage, the leaves and the petals would have dried off, so only the seed pods will remain on the stem 
and by then they will fill up with seeds and I'm going to show you what the seeds look like so these are the seeds guys and the plant is propagated by seeds and these are the roots of the plant so as you can see it has a shallow root system So guys, there is another plant that bears close resemblance to clip dagger and because of this, a lot of people confuse one for the other. This is the other plant and it's actually a cousin of clip dagger. Scientifically, it is known as Leonotis leonuros and like clip dagger, it has a common name lion's tail but it also has a common name wild dagger among other common names. In terms of the physical appearance, the difference between them really lies in the leaves of the plants because clip dagger has two types of leaves. The leaves that grow lower down on the stem, they are thick and oblong to ovate or ovate, but the leaves that are higher up on the stem are thin and elongated. While wild dagger's leaves are all thin and elongated, and they look similar to hemp leaves. They're also leathery, so if you decide to go off and do your own research, or if you decide to go foraging for clip dagger, make sure it's the correct plant. It is said that the leaves, stems, flowers, and whole plant are used for medicinal purposes and that the plant is used as a tincture and as a decoction both topically or orally in the treatment of a wide variety of conditions such as hemorrhoids, eczema, ringworm, urticaria, head sores, skin rashes, boils, itching, wound healing, burns and skulls, muscular cramps, headaches, constipation, spider bites and snake bites, diarrhea, paralysis, fever, coughs, chest infections, bronchial asthma, influenza, malaria, womb prolapse, and epilepsy. It is also said that the plant is used in folklore medicine to manage and or control painful arthritic and other inflammatory conditions as well as for adult onset type 2 diabetes in terms of the actual treatment for malaria the leaves or whole plant is used to make tea and taken internally for diarrhea powdered flowers or leaf ashes are added to porridge or tea or the flowers and leaves are made into a decoction and consumed for rheumatism the leaves whole plant flowers and seeds are used to make a decoction or a paste which is applied locally the paste of the leaves is used topically to treat eczema and scorpion stings the leaves and stem decoction is applied topically as a treatment for eczema skin infections and itchiness for skin diseases treatment preparations include leaf paste seed paste and in some places mixed with corongi oil inflorescence paste and sometimes this is mixed with groundnut oil also root paste whole plant paste powdered dry leaves and flower ashes 
During treatment, the preparation is applied topically. A paste of the inflorescence mixed with groundnut oil is applied topically for wound healing. It is also said that the whole plant is used for menstrual pain. For labor pain, the leaves are chewed or they are boiled in water and drunk. For convulsions, the leaves are boiled in water and also drunk. For paralysis, the ash of the plant is applied topically. A leaf infusion is taken for coughs and fever. For asthma, the stem, leaves, and the flowers of the plant are used to make a decoction, which is swallowed or powdered flowers are added to porridge or tea and consumed. In Trinidad, it is said to be a cold, fever, and asthma remedy, and the leaves are brewed as a tea for fever, coughs, womb prolapse, and malaria. It is said to be a good heart tonic, and the plant is used for heart conditions that are associated with anxiety and tension, and it is said that it will calm palpitations, tachycardia, and irregular heartbeats. The roots of the plant have been used in the treatment of asthma and bronchitis, also fever and poisoning. And the dried leaves and flowers are smoked to relieve epilepsy. The plant is used as an ornamental in some countries to decorate gardens. On a spiritual level, the tea is said to release negativity and promote inner strength. And it is said that the leaves can be used in salads. Clip dagger tea is not recommended for pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and toddlers. Excessive use may cause gastric and intestinal discomfort. That's it for now guys. Please do your own research and see you in the next video.